One. Hey guys, this is the Sklar Brothers, and you're listening to the Rizzuto Show on 105.7 The Point. Thank you, Sklar Brothers. Hey, we got a guest in the studio, and that guy over there. That's Woo! a host, the mentalist. Yeah! Hey, buddy. Hey, buddy. Man. What's up, boys? Thanks for having me on. So, uh, so man, you you got your suitcase here and everything. I mean, you're... You're heading out of town. Straight to the airport, hitting the tarmac right after this. So you may know O's. I mean, he's been uh, everywhere. I mean, America's got talent. You came in third place. Third place. That's amazing. The bronze. Who uh, who beat you? Uh, Paul Zerden, ventriloquist, gentleman named Drew Lynch, who is known as the stuttering comedian. So you those... got beat by a ventrilo- uh, ventriloquist? <laughs> those damn dummies. God damn it. You dummy. Uh, ventri- he had a peeing baby. He's a nice guy. But yeah. <laughs> how, do you, how do you compete with that? Yeah, you really can't. I, really... Everybody loves magic. Yeah. I mean, you, I mean, you've got, you got your thing. Your thing is magic. Everybody loves magic. Everybody is happy when you walk in the room. Generally speaking, except for maybe my wife. Everybody else. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So he's been on like uh, the Today Show a bunch of times and various radio programs. And this is what you do for a living. You go around and do these corporate events. This is it. These- yeah, last night I was at Edward Jones event, big Edward Jones event next door to here. I'm staying not even a block away. That's it was awesome. meant to be. It was meant to be for uh, 105.7 The Point. What did your parents think? When you said you were going to go into magic, like you, magic was going to be your life, because <laughs> I'm sure they wanted greater things for you. They were like, "Yeah, that's a good hobby for a doctor." Uh, no, I actually did this throughout <laughs> high school. I did this to pay for college. So there's a big catch twenty two. I got an engineering degree by doing this all the time at events. I worked at a Mongolian barbecue restaurant at University of Michigan, doing gigs left and right. Got my degree, worked on Wall Street, and then ended up leaving the normal day job to do this full time. Ah, that's a real success story. So I mean, to answer, so, my parents didn't care that much at that point because they're like, you're paying the bills? Good. That's that's great. Yeah. You paid your way through college. That's all I did, a, yeah. an engineering degree, do, would you actually, do you use that for your magic in any way? I can screw in a light bulb pretty effectively as an electrical <laughs> engineer, <laughs> and that's the limit of the education. But uh, no, I don't, I think the same concept of reverse engineering the way people think Instead of applying it to engineering problems, that's what I now do with my show. How are you going to fool people? How do you get inside someone's head? How do you know what they're going to think before they even think it? What was the first trick you learned? First trick I ever bought was called the rising card. You have somebody pick a, a card, put it back in the deck, they put their hand out, and the card just rises levitates. out of the deck. Levitates. What? Yep. And that was the first. He's already fascinated. Yep. Yeah. This guy over here, you show him something shiny, he's like, oh my God. <laughs> Can I sell that? <laughs> but it's something, okay, so you learn this trick and you practice and you practice and you practice and you practice. Endlessly. And that's how you get good at magic is the repetition of so the, the doing the one trick over and over and over again. It's got to get improved. It's kind of different between what's known as magic and mentalism, which is what I've become known for. Mentalism is almost like magic of the mind. So instead mm-hmm. of doing sleight of hand, exactly what you said, practice over and over and over till your fingers are fast and you know how to do moves. Mentalism, there's almost nothing quick about your hands. It's knowing how people think and it looks like you're reading their minds or influencing their decision making. The thing about that is you could get it wrong over and over and over and you'll probably quit doing it. Or you'll start to learn how to improve. There's a lot fewer mentalists than there are magicians. Right. Much, much fewer. So who are your influences as far as, all right, so street magicians? Well, David Blaine is the legend, man. The He's the guy. He's the godfather. He launched the whole movement of street magic and things of that sort. And looking at people's reactions instead of looking at the performer. Then, you know, the greats, Houdini, Copperfield but, is but still is, legends. But is what David Blaine does, I mean, I, I've seen his specials yep. and stuff. And he does the, you know, the card tricks and the levitation tricks. But a lot of his stuff was like endurance stuff. Like out I'd, there, yeah. I'd be, you know, in a in a block of ice for you know four days, or you know, I'm going to stand on this post right for a week. But he gets you is talking. That magic, though. No, definitely not magic. But I think it, it, whatever gets you talking. And That's the like, fact is that, he? Can he survive? Right. Yeah, the more entertaining stuff to me is the is not their survival stuff. It's the on the street stuff where he turns around with a deck of cards and throws it against a window of a store, and and all of a sudden one of the cards that somebody picked out is stuck to the other side of the wall. Right, that's the stuff that's that makes amazing. me go. Psh. And uh, Penn and Teller, Pe- I just saw them. I was just in Vegas, saw them a week ago. That's some good stuff there, Penn and Teller. Penn and Teller are very entertaining. I mean, they're they're just a unique duo. Nobody's ever done what they did. Nobody has been able to emulate it or fake it. They are one of a kind, true originals. Now, as far as mentalists go, yep. who are your, your people? So that's the thing. Right now, there's a big opening. What you just said is 
the nature of the beast, the void. Nobody in this country is known as the mentalist. Where if I said to you right now, who's the street magician? Bam, you said David Blaine. Mm -hmm. you, you say kind of the rock magician, Chris Angel. There's that void where nobody has the mentalist that everybody thinks of. Mm -hmm. that, that's the void I'm hoping to fill. There's a lot of people that I look up to, but you would never know them because mentalists have never become as famous. In the UK, there's a guy named Darren Brown, who's a legend. Everybody knows him in, in, in the UK. Here, he's never really... Have you heard of him? No. So he's, he hasn't really broken fully in the States, but there, he's unreal. He's done crazy TV specials, shows in London. Uh, he's one of the people I would say I emulate a lot. Hmm. What's, uh, I see you got an envelope over there. Brought a little something. I'm a giver. Envelope. Describe it to everybody. It's a priority mail envelope, fully sealed up. Yeah, that is. I mean, it's a, yeah. it's a USPS yeah. sealed. Yeah. The Riz. Sign it. Yeah, US sign it. Postal Service priority mail flat rate envelope. Let's get all the boys. Is everybody, it sealed? Is that sealed? Riz, you sign it. Sign it. See if there's a yes. over there. Sign it. Use that orange highlighter, whatever you want. Sharpie. Sign it. We're on the front. Anywhere. Surprise me. Sign my chest. See if it's fake or real. <laughs> don't ask me. I yeah, always get on, it wrong. That's on Tuesdays, and hey, that stresses us out. Do not make your signature bigger than mine. Okay, I'll make it smaller. <laughs> that's what she said. I'm, hey. the I'm the John Hancock of this show. That My signature is, true. is bigger than all. And then sign on the other side, right by where it's sealed, so nobody thinks I can slip something in there. Like any, sign any, it yeah, right yeah. yeah. Get dirty. Get it, Jeff. I got it, sir. You know we do not open that until the end of the show. So Riz, you hold on to that. Hold that. <laughs> and make sure I don't put anything in. I can't take anything right, out. I can't right switch here. to a new envelope, can I? It's going to be That's real tough. There That's over there, right there. Yeah, there. Nobody first, can walk past I was going to say, you can't over go over there. You yeah, get you shot. can. You do. <laughs> you have to say permission to come aboard, and I normally say no. There's a that bear trap <laughs> right where you set it into. You can't <laughs> see it, radio leaves viewers. Over there, I put leaves over here, and then you walk over the leaves, and there's spikes <laughs> at the bottom. Got that from an episode of Gilligan's Island. It works every time. You know, Moon met a owes the mentalist at some corporate gig we sent him down to florida and yeah. i mean his mind was blown yeah i called you afterwards and i was like dude i'm st i'm still pissed because i'm trying to figure out how this one works i'm one of those guys that goes and i can't enjoy anything because i'm trying right. to dissect it i'm trying to like catch you messing up or, mm -hmm. or something and the whole time i was just like this is obnoxiously good obnoxiously good well, it, you, you did that thing with the wallet and it was hooked in it's, it's, <laughs> I, you know what? I, it's See, impossible to describe. It's it, funny. And this is a guy that has verbal diarrhea and he can't. Certainly, Dude, it's true. Yeah. I, That's I the quote going on the front of my website. He is obnoxiously <laughs> good. <laughs> we have Moon. My, myself and my wife, huge America's Got Talent fans, and yeah. you were on, and nice. it was the best because every single time after you're done, the judges stand up and start clapping, and my wife every time goes, "Son of a bitch! I don't know how he did it." <laughs> That's like the reaction. You, oh my, you're like, how, how, how? This is how. But again, it's not, it's not sleight of hand stuff. It's not the the magician stuff that you see it's the mental stuff and you know that um you know you're talking about engineering uh tricks and all that this is like psychology this is psychological magic big time and, and it messes with you it's because amazing. you realize that you're manipulating or you're doing something or you're just damn near magic and it's it's a mind it's a mind game the thing you did with the uh the, the cutting the paper and uh, Stern Oprah. was Oprah. thinking about Oprah's yeah. face or something. Oh, that yeah. Go to, go, you know, we'll link some of his videos on our blog, 1057thepoint.com yeah. slash Riz. I mean, people that do what I do, amazing. kind of other mentalists, that was what really came out of it, other than obviously mass appeal. But they, I got a lot of props from people that know what I do in the industry because mm -hmm. they knew how risky I took big chances on that show. Well, you where, got to. You have to. Where literally you're sitting with the producers, they're saying there's going to be about 14 million people watching live. There's uh, on air 6,200 people in the audience and they go, well, what if this happens? And I go, oh, then I screw up. Right. And then they just look yeah, at me blank face and they're like, well, what do you do? And I go, yeah, I sit there looking like an idiot. It better not happen. And they, they couldn't grasp because, you know, it's things like ladders and motorcycle jumps, things that are dangerous. They, they have a margin of error. Mm -hmm. And some of the things I did, they go, well, what if Howard Stern doesn't say that? And I go, well, he will. And they're like, how do you know? What if he doesn't? Exactly. And I go, well, you got to trust me. That's going to be the show. And, uh, they couldn't believe a lot of what was going on. That you would, I would actually attempt to do it. Have you ever worked a crowd and you do this amazing trick and somebody stands up and goes, I know I did that. I know. Not usually. I know I did that. So with a heckler, things like a heckler yeah. in a comedy show, how do you handle certain you hecklers? You saw him in half. That's, yeah. that's it. That's Get exactly right. right. You've done that twice. For real. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's what happened to our last intern, Is that, yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> Heard oh, that story. All right. It's a magic bullet. Uh, oops. <laughs> <laughs> Wrong gun. Yeah, how do you handle Heckler? 
So I've, the way the hecklers generally tend to work with mentalists as opposed to comedians is they want one of two things. They want attention, same thing as at a comedy show. Mm -hmm. And if you bring them in the mix, if right when they do that, you reward a little bit of bad behavior and say, let's get this guy in here, and then you do something to blow their mind, then they're usually silenced. It's literally right. the, the heckler killer. Or you pretend to teach them how to do something and then watch them make a fool of themselves. Right. So either way, they're getting the attention they want, whether it's directed positive or negative. You, you need to know how to diffuse them or peer pressure. Turn the audience against them, and that tends to work very well. If everybody else wants to see you and get this big guy to shut up, right. then... The, the, Make him look like a fool. Exactly. They do, they do my dirty work for me. They're the muscle. But it's all... It's all it's all psychology. I, I'm, I'm imagining you do study psychology, and I mean that's that's the the heart of what you're doing, right? Every show is is I don't use the term psychology as much because there's no there's no pathology. I'm not telling people how they're messed up or what's going on in their head, but the way people think and audience management. I try to manage people's thoughts, people's actions. So. I know where your eyes are going to go. You're almost making our brain work against itself is Big, what you're doing. Pretty much. Yeah. Now, I know you said you could do stuff, uh, some stuff with our listeners. Let's do it. So could we get some... Uh, hey, Quattro, how many callers? Three callers? Well, the callers I would do later. Let's get them mixed in. Let's do a little something for you right here, right now. All right. Oh, yeah, like, you, right. like what you asked us to do earlier? I told all of you when I walked away, oh, okay, I great. said to think of your first kiss. I asked, did any of you ever mention your first kiss on the air before? I definitely have not. I don't think I have I either. Think I, have. I, I think I did in passing, but it's been well I would over never a year. Remember. I may have at some point, but... And he said you haven't. I don't think I have. No. I certainly okay, haven't. But you have kissed Especially a girl. The, the, no, was correct. That has you. happened. <laughs> that just wow, you, that fit real, you fit in on the show. <laughs> <laughs> you owe me a dollar. You were wrong. I have <laughs> four cards, and you could tell everybody what they say. Truth, 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 and a lie. Kind of okay. like that game, Two Truths and a Lie. I mm -hmm. stepped up my game for today. Three Truths and a Lie. On the Rizzuto show. Mix these up okay. so you don't think I know which is which. No, no, turn them down, though, so turn you can't see either. Okay. He's mixing them up. Tell them what he's doing right now. Is he mixing he's, up yeah, those mixing cards? Them up. Yeah. Put them in your hands so you yeah, can't and see so or whatever. three cards that say truth shuffle. and one that Give him a cut, you know, like poker. Lie. I don't know. Whatever you want to do. Okay. You got him? Yep. Hand. Oh, no, I'm not going to okay. hand one all the way down. Just notice, one? Notice he one. never touches anything. I'm not touching like, anything. Once hand he lets one it go. To the Riz, baby, the Riz. Give me one, okay. one right now. Put it right against your chest. See what I'm saying? And hand one to Moon. Now, I can't see. I'm going to close my eyes. Do not show each other. Do not show each other. Everyone look down at your card. It's either going to say truth or lie. Okay. And then put it right back against your chest or your stomach. Did that? All right. Okay. Yeah. Moon might be flexing right now. Uh, <laughs> probably <a> show off. <laughs> if the card said truth, I want you to tell us the actual name of your first kiss. I'm going to be watching to see who I think is lying. If it said lie, make up a fake name. Does everybody understand what they're about to do? Right. Correct. Now, big pointer, if you're the one who's going to lie, make up the fake name now. So when we get on the mic, you don't go, uh, not as amazing. Here we go. I'm just grabbing this marker. Let's do it. If your card said truth, tell me the truth. What is your first kiss's name? Amanda Rivera. Okay, now we don't need last names. Okay. Just because <laughs> Amanda might be listening. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure she's not. <laughs> See, I, if he felt like he told the truth, he threw in the last name. That seemed like he was really trying to sell me. Let's do it over here. What's your kiss? first kiss's name? Sarah. Yeah, he looked way too excited. Do you see that? He was mm -hmm. remembering it. Blood's flowing. I think you're telling the truth, 100%. Show us your card. It says truth. It, says it truth. was Sarah. It was Sarah. Okay, let's keep it going. Uh, what was your first kiss's name? Jenny. Jenny. All right, so he seemed very serious. Didn't blink, didn't do anything, kept... Eye contact with me the whole time. Felt way too focused for a normal answer. I think you told the truth about Amanda Rivera. Show us your card. Say truth. truth. It says truth. It says truth. 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 Last but not least, what was your first kiss's name? Chris. Guy or girl? God. Girl. Uh, <laughs> he, he was telling the truth girl. about the, both things. All right. Girl. I think, here's what I'm thinking. This is one out of four. It was definitely Chris. You're telling the truth. Moon, Jenny is a lie. Show us your card. He's lying. You're telling the truth. Now we got three honest Abes. Can I borrow a piece of paper here? Sure. Which means Moon just lied to me, which means Jenny is not the name. Nope. All right. I want you to go back in time to when this was. Do I have to? Two weeks ago. Uh, <laughs> Moon. He's got 17 kids. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Close your eyes. Imagine where you were. What was going on? Is there any way in the world I could have found this on Facebook or on Twitter or somewhere, no. shape, or form? Right? Have you ever publicized this? No, nope. Um, I got a feeling I'm about to, though. Okay. 
I, I think the age. I'm going to show the boys. Keep your eyes closed for me, Moon. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Uh, and I just wrote something, and you guys can vouch for what that said. Okay. Okay. Moon, yeah. do you remember approximately how old you were at the time? Yes. How old were you? 16. Uh, a little bit of a late bloomer. And how old was she? 16. Take a look. I said, open your eyes. He was 16, so was she. <laughs> I hate it. I hate it. And, uh, and, and wow. I feel like, you know, a lot of these things tend to happen outdoors, kind of like by the swing set, but he's a little old for the swing set at this uh -huh. point. Um, or is he? Is he? He's the, the, the right swing. size. Uh, what is happening? It's, it's something. No, I don't get an outdoor vibe. There was an outdoor vibe, but then you went indoors. Something's going on. Uh, take me through the motions. Now, most people, when they lie, see how he said Jenny? Uh -huh. Most people on the spot in the morning like this, they can't come up with a fake name quick enough. So they try to keep it the same. So if he said Jenny, bet you 80% chance the name starts with either a J or an H. Something close to a J. H-I-J, something like that. Can you guys see what I wrote? Yeah, okay. All right. Take it. us on a stroll down memory lane. Moon, what was going on? How did this first kiss occur? Take me through your moves. <laughs> Where were you? Well, it was after a movie. I was in my mother's car. Stop right there, man. Stop no right there. Just way. show him. Just show him. What did I write down, Riz? In mom's, in in mom's, mom's car, car after, after a movie. movie. Oh what? Oh, my God. Hand to God, you didn't talk about this before. I promise, dude. This is freaking me Look out. Look at me. Not Jenny. So I bet it's really close. Jenny, Jenny. I would have said something that rhymes. It's not Jesse. Maybe that was her nickname. Jessica was her name, wasn't it? Yeah, I don't like this at all. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, everybody think of your ATM pin codes and social security numbers. <laughs> oh, my God. Got it. First of all, that, what You're the, taking your jacket off. Are you happened? sweating? Y yeah, I'm sweating. He's disrobing right now. What just happened? Were you there? Keep doing like, it. Keep I, thought, doing it. I thought I checked. No yeah. one was there. I was in the back seat. No, I wasn't. Well, no, I wasn't. <laughs> yeah, that was later. That, yeah, was, that later. was two weeks later. Slow down the story. <laughs> wow. What oh, in the hell mentor. just happened? Wow. Ready I for the best part? Right outside here. the studio, we have Jessica. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> With Amanda Rivera. Oh, boy, Amanda. I don't think she likes guys anymore, anyway. <laughs> oh, boy. The details. <laughs> Is that Mary Shelley Frankenstein? Uh, no, no. That's somebody different. <sighs> I that's told crazy. you, this guy hears the word wow a lot. The details are really messing me up. I tried. Patrico. Yes. Why don't we give it a go? I feel like, mm, what? Uh, what is your favorite food? Chicken it's called all. <laughs> <laughs> These guys are Let's hilarious. Get it? You're bigger. This is awesome. <laughs> jerks. What? Think of a, a color. Nah, I already did colors. Think of a number. Okay. Let's say between one and a hundred. Okay. You got something? Yeah. Okay. I'm writing his name down. Patrico. Is this number meaningful? Is there some reason we're going for this number or not really? Uh, Sort of. I mean, it's not. Uh, yeah, I would say it's meaningful. Would any of the guys here know you're about to pick this number? Maybe. Okay, let's take a look. Uh, One to a hundred. Do you know what the most commonly picked is? Seven. Clear cut. Seven. Oh. Everyone picks seven. It's very lucky. Eight. Asian culture is much more lucky, so you don't know which one he's going to go. I was going to say 22. I'm going to go. You know what? I'm going with this. Grab the pen. Was it two digits? It was two he digits. He wrote something down on a pad. I hope. I hope. Well, we'll show the camera yeah. in a sec. What did you go with? Tell us, what was that number? 97. Tell him what I wrote down. Go big or go home, right? What did I write? Holy balls. <laughs> did you write down 97? He wrote down 97. What's 97? This is the weirdest thing Are you thing kidding ever? me? Is that the, what, what's that? 97. Pa I was a big Pavel Bure fan. He was 96. I always said if I played hockey with him, I'd be 97. So I would have thought you would have said 69. Yeah, that's, that's, that's why I didn't go I to the race. 97 too was his actual birth weight, and I thought maybe that's why you're coming that's up That's hilarious, that. too. Thanks, what man. The, the right I, answer for the record is 105.7. 105.7 is the right answer. That's Yes. That's uh, higher than 100. Uh, his website <laughs> is ozperlman.com. O z p a r l m a n dot com. That's your website. P e a r Pearl. And -E the crazy name looks like yeah. Oz. It's O's. O's. You got to blame my parents. Yeah. Well, you're Israeli. Israeli. That's like a mic over there. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we got to take a break. I know you could stick around for another couple minutes. Of course. So let's get some what? people on the phone. Yeah, let's do we something crazy. Three people. Three one four nine six nine, dude. You have time, right? Yeah. Have a couple minutes here. Kid, love it. I'm going to take a break and we'll come back with more uh, O's.